Hi guys, welcome back to part three. If you're just joining us, this is the third part in the double carport build. So if you haven't seen the first or second part, check those out and then come back to this. But we're going to continue right where we left off from the last video. So long story short, this is what I ended up doing. I ended up putting little baby eight inch footings under each of the middle legs. As you can see here, these aren't necessarily anchor points, but they are just so the tent lays perfectly level because as you know, if you watch previous videos, there's a grade line and whatnot, and I try to get it as level as possible. So this is what I did on the five feet here, and then the five inside feet over there. So the instructions say put the back door on and the front door on first, and then the canvas goes over after. So since these center supports, well these are dry on the left side, but the right is still, um, still damp. I think we're gonna just put the back side on, the front side on, and then tomorrow, when everything's cure, We'll throw the whole canvas on. If you're like me and you have to read directions 800 times to understand it, because that's just how I work, there's pre-cut slits in, um, in the cover. So what we're going to do is we've got to pull the cover up, wrap it around, and then that top arch there, right here, you unbolt that and you actually feed it through the um, pre-cut slit and then you bolt everything down. It also recommends putting duct tape on the head of the bolt to reduce fatigue. So there's a pre-cut slit for the center, for the side support here, and the other side support here behind, right behind the ladder. And then you, it's like a drawstring on a sweatpant. You pull the drawstring tight and it'll hold the door tight. So. Of course the wind's picking up, so let's see if we can do this uh, with one person. Let's give it a shot. So you can see here the canvas actually wraps around and then you have to feed that um, small skinny bar through it and bolt everything back together. So it's a little, you need three hands, but I got it done. So this is what I'm talking about. You have to peel it over the peak and then you got to put, as I'm doing right now, you got to fish that little bar through, bolt everything back together. So as you can see, the camera drifted off into space, but I did the same thing on the left side. Wrapped it over and then put the bar through, bolted it together. One thing recommended that you want to do by Rhino Shelter is put some duct tape over each end bolt. They're not actually bolts, as you can see there, grooved. Uh, grooved heads but they recommend putting a little thing of duct tape around them just to prevent cover wear okay so here is that was the back cover here's the front cover all you literally do is you start with the center you fold the canvas over the pipe and see the factory notches are right here I had to cut the fabric here this is no way on God's green earth I measured from this slit to the factory slit, and then I measured from this pole to the center pole, and they're off. So this is a manufacturing defect, which I'm going to reach out to Rhino Shelter about, but I had to cut here, slide the pipe through. I used the factory center one, the center slit that came with it, and then same thing over here. This is how far it was off. I mean, that's a good... I don't know, eight inches. I recommend if Rhino Shelter ever sees this video is to just put markings where they think the cut should go. Because now I have a cut I had to put in and then I have another cut here. This is just more prone to ripping. But I'm gonna reach out to them and see what they say. Now let's do the drawstring. How the drawstring works is like this. You put this turnbuckle on the foot here and that draw cord, like a, like a sweat pant, goes all the way up and around. So I will demonstrate how you take that slack out and then tie it with the second turnbuckle. Now, once you get it tight enough, you can adjust it and tighten it with the turnbuckle. Make sure it's not too tight where you can't open and close your doors. Keep in mind the fabric will stretch a little bit, 
but you want to make sure that you can unzip and open and close your doors without strain on the zipper. So if you look, that drawstring looks pretty good. Nice and snug around that first pole. Both turnbuckles are tight. You want to make sure the door is not too tight so it can open and close. I think we're alright. I think it's time to move on to the... Oh, i got to tape the rest of those heads of the nuts. Then we can move on. So this is it, nothing fancy. Just a couple pieces of duct tape to cover the head just to prevent um, friction and eventually wearing a hole in it. So that's it. I did that on every single bolt. Now moving on to the canopy, first thing you want to do is get it situated so you can um, get it over. So you need to start on one side. With the trees in the forest, I had to start from the right side if you're looking at it and droop it over to your left. So it took me about 20 minutes to do, but I'll do a quick time lapse. So what I ended up doing, as you'll see, is I just spread it, pulled it all the way down and then worked it over one rung at a time with the step ladder back and forth. So let me show you the time lapse so you get an idea of how that worked. Now each corner of the canvas has a rope and a ratchet strap and you tighten it down just like you kind of did the turnbuckle. You'll see in a second. Alright, took about an hour to get the canvas over but as you saw I just kind of drooled it over this side with the, could have really used this 10 foot step ladder, that's only a 7 foot but drooped it over. It says in the book to uh, let the fabric sit. And then you can tighten up the hood later. So let's do a little walk around. Here's the back. Rhino shelter. More of a pull down. More of a reveal on the back than the front. But that's quite alright. Back and the footings anchored. I just gotta tighten those bolts. Hopefully I remember that before I edit this video. <laughs> Clean up the skirting a little bit. Should be done. The last thing I have to do, it's dark in here, obviously, but I gotta wrap around those eyelets, which will pull, pull this canvas a little bit more taut than it is. So let's do that. Get these boards out of here first of all and clean up, then we'll wrap around. I just don't know how, how happy this makes me. What a long couple of weeks to get this carport up. What a long couple of weeks um, between digging the footings, pouring the concrete, and trying to get the canvas over. My only complaint was that those slits were off. Other than that, as you can see, see behind me, it looks pretty good. Uh, yeah, now the next thing, part of the ultimate carport build, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hang on some chain. We're going to hang some linked LED shop lights because we have 220 and 110 out there. So I really want some light out there. If I got to come out here and get on the tractor, get on the four-wheeler, or hook up the wood splitter, or change an attachment, I want to be able to see what I'm doing. So um, that part will be next, but thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions or comments, um, you saw what I did. If you need any measurements or this is something you want to do, uh, I recommend it. 
it was a pain, but we got it done. So please like and subscribe. If you like what you see, please uh, comment and share this video if you like it. And uh, there's always projects on the homestead. So we'll see you guys next time. Thanks.